Hello, I'm Seth. And I'm Intignari. And this is Lessons on the Fence. So, this week we wanted to talk about the labor shortage. The labor shortage. So, it's a thing. Even though the pandemic has kind of died down, the jobs have not been filled. Yeah. You know, at first, like... I thought, oh, this is a good problem to have. Like, now it's super easy to find a job. Although, I mean, I kind of wish this was when I was looking for a job. You know, last summer, what was it? During the pandemic, maybe? When I was looking for a job. And, like, in some places, I couldn't even get an interview. Mm -hmm. Or, like, and it was restaurants. Restaurants. I did get an interview at Kroger, but then stuff didn't work out. Like, so I was like, I kind of wish that this problem was happening then when I was really in need of work, which I guess it was. Well, yeah, you got your current job, which maybe, I don't know, maybe the my labor current shortage one, helped. My what? current one doesn't really have to do with the shortage. But yeah, I just mean, true. like, I wish it was, like, super easy to get a like a job that you don't need or when I was looking for jobs in the summer before my last year in college I was like this should be easier to get hired at yeah a at restaurant. Like, just yeah like I didn't even get an interview at one of the restaurants yeah it's crazy when you try to get a job at a place where you wouldn't even want to have a career and they expect you to have a lot of experience I don't know what it was that didn't give me the interview at that one place, but still, I was like, besides graders, the ice cream place, like, there was nowhere else that didn't take longer than, like, a month to get back to me. And now, yeah. people are getting, like, incentives just for showing up to interviews, or incentives to stay in jobs. Yeah. No, it's crazy. I saw that I don't know where I saw this, just some article is talking about how people are, like I guess hiring managers are frustrated because people are taking jobs and then not showing up for their first day or yeah. not. Like, so now it's like the reverse problem, I guess. Yeah. It's crazy. Like even after you hire someone, they might not show up. Right. Four people apply, and then they don't even show up for the interview. It's like, okay, yeah. why'd you apply? Yeah, that too. So I was just, so let's go and talk about what might be the causes of these things. Okay. Of these job openings. Sometimes. Okay, so the causes of the labor shortage. Um, I th the most obvious one is the pandemic because of the timing. Yeah. Um, I don't, from what I could find, it doesn't seem like the pandemic is the only cause. Um, well, it's not the pandemic itself as much as like, it is the pandemic itself, but also like what people realized during the pandemic. Like when we were forced not to come into work, people started rethinking like, why do I go into work? <laughs> Yeah, and I think it's both. It, like, it's it's probably people who quit going into work and start of reevaluated their jobs, and it's probably also people who were forced to keep working when they didn't feel safe. Mm -hmm. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's weird. Yeah. Well, there's a funny. Not funny, but kind of strange article. It says three reasons why there's a labor shortage 
according to Biden's labor secretary. And this have like three blank or blunt statements. Number one is we're living in an unprecedented times. That's the reason. One of the reasons. Well, yeah, that makes sense. That's yeah. true. With the pandemic, I mean, there hasn't been a major pandemic like this that interrupted right. like life probably since the Spanish flu, which right. was before most people. Like, I'm guessing there aren't many people alive today. There might not be anyone alive today that remembers the Spanish flu. I think there are a few. I think there there was a commercial, I think, of like was there? this hundred plus year old lady telling people to get vaccinated because she had been in the Spanish flu. She's oh, wow. Friend. Is yeah. she still alive? Yeah, I mean, she was probably really young when it happened. But I saw a commercial. Did she me. remember it, though? Probably not, no. Oh. I mean, I guess, yeah, there could be people alive. But, like, to remember it, I doubt you have did. to be, yeah, over 100. Because no. that was, like, 1918, right? Yeah. 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 That's crazy. I wonder how much they paid her. How they found her and how much they paid her. Maybe she did it for free. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I guess, yeah, I guess we'd have to investigate that separately. Isn't if we actually want to know. It was like a vaccine commercial, basically. Uh huh. Told people to get vaccinated. I wonder if that's part of it, too. I think I did read some, like, people don't feel safe going to work, so they're not working. Or they don't want to get the vaccine and their work could potentially make them. And that actually is second reason in this article they say fears over health. People are taking care of people that are sick or people are afraid of getting sick so they're not going to work. Did you hear that we have a Delta Plus now? It's like a, another strain of the virus. Wait, that's an actual thing? I thought that was like a joke. I don't think so, but I've also heard that like as the virus mutates, like it's going to not get or it'll get weaker. Not weaker, but it won't cause people to be as sick so it can keep hosts alive and keep spreading. So like as the virus mutates, it, it's not necessarily going to be worse. Yeah. Than I it mean was before. It makes sense. I guess it's more beneficial to the virus right. if the people don't die because then the virus can exactly. stay alive longer mm -hmm. if a virus is living. I don't know. I don't think it is, but... Yeah. Then So it can stay think... in whatever state of being yeah. it is for longer. Yeah. I think I heard all this on a Joe Rogan podcast and they talk about... It. Yeah, he was talking to Sanjay Gupta and he was like... They both were like viruses want a host so they can spread like the way they talk about viruses is um sentient beings is so funny it's kind of is a personification yeah 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 it's just weird because it's like it's a strand of proteins right strand of dna yeah but it doesn't that's what we're all made of right necessarily. Huh? that's what we're all made of that's true it's just some of them are more complicated simple. Yeah, simple. and simple. Yeah, it's just funny to me. Mhm. Mm but it makes sense to antagonize COVID since it completely derailed how we viewed life. Yeah. And um, how we go about life now too. So I'm a little worried that you're going to be really quiet again oh in the recording in the recording you think so just because my mic is this far down yeah i'm i don't know okay how's this see you you just got louder okay see i sound just a little bit louder i don't sound that much different i know also my voice is just really deep so okay that does sound better yeah okay we're back yeah. Okay, third reason, which is kind of what we already talked about in this article, Biden's labor secretary said, third reason we 
third reason for the labor shortage is people are rethinking life and work. What does that mean? I don't know. I was going to ask you, how have you rethought life and work since working from home, like, almost for as long as I've known you? Yeah. Well, I'm guessing it has made me like my job less than I would otherwise, probably. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I am not looking forward to having to go back into the office either. Mm Mm-hmm. So it's weird. So I feel like if I was going into the office, I would probably enjoy my job more, but I don't want to go back into the office. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if and when you do, you'll really realize, like, how much time it takes to get there, like, all the inconveniences that go along with going into work, like getting dressed in your button-down shirts. Yeah, I've just been wearing a T-shirt every day. I've seen you wear, like, three times in the past year because you never Cause have I to don't dress go. up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. At any moment, like, if we were to go back to virtual, as much as, like, I don't like how students' perceptions of how school works thanks to virtual teaching, like, in some ways I would be happy to go back to teaching online. Yeah, in some like, ways I feel like as a teacher it's different yeah. I mean I know when I was a student um, I definitely preferred the in-person classes yeah no I would I do too I did awful not awful in like the last semester of college because we were online but I definitely got really annoyed with it really quickly and like didn't have very much motivation to do anything beyond what was expected yeah it's just a lot easier when you're in person because like they include the time that you're in class as like time learning and if you're doing an online class they have to make up for the time that you would have been in class so it's like there's extra work that just feels like busy work. yeah the lines are really blurred when you have both work at home and school at home like even making that distinction for yourself like this is when I'm gonna work and this is when I'm not I mean you've been really good about that but I know I'd probably be pretty bad about that if we had to go all virtual again yeah because that's kind of what's happened like people burnt out over the pandemic because it's like oh I can work from home let me just work all the time yeah. Yeah, I guess that that can be tough. I I think I'm just lucky that I have a job where there's not pressing stuff all the time. So mm-hmm. it's like in the most days I feel comfortable quitting like being done working after 8 hours. Yeah. Like I don't need to do more. Yeah. I'm not tell me what that's like because I have no idea because people can always do more yeah as a teacher uh huh and that's what they I mean that's what they talked about before the pandemic too like don't have your school email on your phone like designate the time that you're home for being at home I still hear talk, teachers talk about how they will work on stuff till 9 or 10 mm-hmm. at night every day and I'm like Yikes. Yeah. It would be bad if, like, I was responsible for other employees or something. Mm. Or, like, I... Yeah. Because I feel like most of the deadlines and stuff, it's, like, mostly stuff that the higher-up people have to worry about. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have to worry about, like, finishing different tasks within a reasonable amount of time. But, like, the hard deadlines, I feel like... Yeah, they just tell me like make sure this is done and most of the time it's pretty easy to meet those but like if I was higher up then I'd have to be making sure other people that are other people them. are meeting the deadlines that need to be met and I feel like that could require like you might need to 
be more attached to your email or yeah just to be able to help like that would be annoying i think to have a job where you feel like you need to respond immediately if something comes up yeah i have that sometimes where it's like it'd be really good for me to respond right now or i should Mm -hmm. i think my professors when i was in college they would always say like if you send me an email then give me up to a day to respond Mm. They'd yeah, that's say probably they, good to... Yeah, they'd say they would always check it at least once a day. So if you send something, but, like, don't expect an immediate response. Probably good to disclose that up front, for sure. Probably. So, so those are the reasons why um, Biden's labor secretary said that there's a labor shortage you know it's it seems like it's a myth that the unemployment benefits or like the stimulus and the unemployment insurance checks keep people from wanting to work did you see that when you were looking this up that like even when the stimulus payments stopped people still weren't seeking work yeah because i feel like the labor shortage issues are like a problem right now and there aren't really stimulus checks right now and i mean i don't know about the unemployment insurance do you know if that's still going not automatically not like like is it extra right now or is it back to whatever i think it's back to normal okay not sure on that but i think that all those benefits like have ended now. Yeah, and I feel like the labor shortage is an issue more now than it ever has been, right? Like, it's not really getting better. Yeah. No, yeah, I guess if it hasn't gotten any better, or stay the same. If it hasn't stayed the same, it's gotten worse since they ended all the stimulus stuff. From what I've seen. So, so basically... Yeah. So basically, it wasn't, or we can't say that the checks have kept people from wanting to go back to work. Like, people aren't feeling like, oh, I have plenty of money coming in from the government for free. I don't need to go back to work. That's not why there's a labor shortage. No. I, I think another thing that I heard is a reason that I don't think we've brought up yet is just people retiring. Yeah. Yeah, I saw the, I don't know, the new school in New York. I don't know who they polled or how how they found this, but they said like millions, two million people in America like retired earlier than they planned to right after the pandemic. Yeah. Like the pandemic, I guess, made more people decide to retire. Yeah. And that's a problem because it's like the baby boomer generation. So it's a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And then also, I guess they're saying that um, that the birth rate has been declining. Yeah. And Some so, people are really worried about that. Yeah. And so there's not enough young workers to replace the old workers who are retiring. Right. Mm-hmm. And then also immigration hasn't been up. So you also don't have new people from other countries to fill it either Mm -hmm. yeah it's interesting yeah I was listening to something where someone decided to retire early because their 401k actually was way up because I guess with the stock market bouncing back after the pandemic like Mm -hmm. they had some good assets they could cash in on or whatever that economic talk is. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, because the... I mean, I think the stock market is still high. Mm. I think it's been going up. I mean, I haven't looked recently. But every time I've looked, it's mostly been a little bit higher than it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's only true if you only look periodically. 
because in the short term it's kind of a little chaotic but right but yeah lately it's been going up quite a bit yeah speaking of like the birth rate and stuff i remember during the pandemic like before i was here with you when i was back home and like doing nothing because we couldn't go anywhere or do anything i would go like on walks and runs and stuff and i remember seeing this family like like a two-year-old kid like just two parents and their single two-year-old and i was like this seems like a good time to like have a young child not give birth to a child but to have a young child i'm like there's nothing else that you could do besides spend time with your kid yeah and if they're young like that you're not gonna be like they're not gonna be annoyed with you like if you had you know teenagers or something Mm -hmm. it's like that's so nice this young couple could be with their kid all day every day until who knows when it ends Mm -hmm. it's like you really get every moment but like with a young kid wouldn't you anyway We'll see. Except for like sending them. But that's the thing; they might not have. They do have daycares for like really younger, really young kids. Yeah. And that's why some people. That's also a reason why I read that some people, especially women, haven't gone back into the workforce since the pandemic. They decided that they want to be caretakers for either children or other family members. Said the labor shortage. Um, disproportionately, you know, like, has to do with women being out of the workforce uh-huh. more so than men. So, so, so like, d- more women left mm-hmm. their jobs. So, do you think that's more of a like they f- they want to do that, or they feel like they need to do that? That's a good question. I don't know. I think it's probably a little bit of both. I think, it, again, that's like the health fears that people have mm-hmm. might be part of why they want to stay home with their kid than send their kids somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, or just the cost of childcare, I guess. Although if they were working in a job, it would, could go towards paying for childcare. Although childcare is very expensive. So again, maybe they want to save on that with their young child and just be with them instead of sending them somewhere else. I think it's probably a little bit of both wanting and needing Mm -hmm. to stay home. Yeah, that's interesting thinking about like having a kid or like a young kid and like being forced to spend more time with them because of the pandemic and I'm wondering if like that's mostly been a good thing or mostly been a bad thing yeah that's what I keep wondering especially the young children like people that were in kindergarten first grade when the pandemic hit kids like that like what is their concept of socializing with them peers you know I mean already because they're like five and six they're not very developed socially Mm -hmm. but like how much has that detracted from their regular development if if it has I don't know I guess we yeah I wonder if like kids younger like who maybe their parents would normally send them to like a young daycare Mm mm-hmm who all of a sudden are with their parents I wonder if that's been beneficial I don't know I would feel like in a lot of ways it is but then a lot of ways there's a potential that it's not I guess it depends on the parent right yeah it depends on the parents but also if like if you're an only child especially and you're used to having all the attention whether that attention is positive or negative if you were used to being at the center I think being being thrown into a classroom of 20 other people your age might be difficult for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And I feel like I see some of that now 
in just a few kids where it's like they're used to adults giving them a lot of attention and they like to be listened to before others like feel like they that there's no one else in the room besides them and me mm-hmm. so do you think so do you think that's more of a thing with just only children or do you think that would be a thing with like the oldest kid I think it's mostly only children only, only children. children that don't that aren't put into activities with other people their age yeah and given space away from their parents. So you think those are the types of kids who also might be getting into more fights? I don't think that, no. Okay. I don't know. I haven't seen, you know, that data on the people getting fights. Although at my school, they show us all the data, like, gender, race, time of day, days of the week. They told us when these altercations are having and also just not just physical fights for every kind of referral did they say did they, they include down. number of siblings no see that's one uh see i feel like that part might they be an talk important about. data point maybe yeah or like maybe like parental like if their parents were together you know yeah maybe i don't know if that would affect it I never got into a fight. My parents were divorced. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure lots of people whose parents were not divorced did not get in fights. But I don't know. It, it could play a factor. Yeah. Lots of things. Everything can play could. Factor. Exactly. That's the thing, though. I mean, that's one of the difficult things about, like, just data stuff. Like, there's so much data. And it's hard to know which data is important for different things. That's like one of the benefits of AI. Like finding what is important because it can sift through all the data a lot faster than we can. Yeah. At least like machine learning stuff. Mm -hmm. But anyway, where were we? We were talking about kids and the pandemic. But our topic is the labor shortage. Yeah. I mean, that makes me think, though, I thought that more teenagers were working now than they had before. I mean, I know when I was student teaching at high school, like, there were kids working 20, 30 hours a week. So in are you saying going to school. more kids percentage-wise or absolute numbers-wise? Yeah, like, percentage-wise. I thought... Nowadays, there's a higher percentage of kids of a certain age, like 15 through 17, working than X years ago. Yeah, I'm wondering. I'm wondering how the absolute numbers compare. Because, like, if there are fewer kids nowadays than there were. Oh yeah, you're right. Then even if it's a higher percentage working, it could still be less numbers. Like less in absolute numbers, because if there's a declining birth rate, then presumably there's fewer kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I look that kind of up, it's or that kind of thing up, it's like talking about child labor, like UNICEF. Oh, like illegal child labor. Right. Yeah. I guess that's not the... Co- you just look for, like, adults, maybe. We have teenage... Like, young adults. 18. Teenage... Or the job shortage is boosting demand for teenage workers. You know, I did hear that, like, companies are more willing to train and, like, more willing to hire, like, people who are still in school, for example. Yeah. Maybe that was just hospitals, but I'm guessing maybe other other jobs would do that too so they're like willing to do more for hiring I mean I think I kind of feel like it's kind of a good thing you know that's what I thought at first but then when you go 
for goods and services and you can't be helped in a certain amount of time just because there aren't people there. Or when whole school districts close because there aren't enough bus drivers, then yeah, so, it's a problem. So I guess I guess you'd say that um, the labor shortage is good for workers, bad for people customers. People seeking work and people are working, yeah. Well, because good for people incentives. seeking work, bad for people seeking services yeah. for customers. Yes, and that's something I read or listened to that, like, in the long run, it's not going to be good for the economy to have so this labor shortage because people will be reluctant to go places and spend their money. I'm not sure if that will really be as extreme as they're saying but they're saying like you know our economy thrives from people moving money around Mm -hmm. but like if places are closed or it's inconvenient to go to a place and buy goods and services or there are less places you can go to to buy goods and services because of the limited availability of workers how much can that money move around yeah but isn't that kind of circular logic Because it's like the economy thrives when money moves around, but Mm -hmm. how do you measure a thriving economy by how much money moves around? So it's like, it's like because we've established GDP, which is measured in how much money moves around as the measurement for success, then you say you're successful when you have that yeah, I get what you mean. In so the it's end, it's like so mostly like, bad for small businesses because people aren't going to go to them because they don't have a lot of workers. And, you know, you can always rely on Walmart to be up and running because they're big enough. Even if they have a shortage, it's like still bad gigantic. for small businesses. More than anything, yeah, bad for small businesses. Well, everything's bad for small businesses anyway, yeah, it seems like. Yeah, system. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I mean, the big businesses have all their anti-competitive stuff, right? Like, you hear about, I think it was Amazon, I guess, in order to acquire some, like, I think diaper company. They put a huge discount on their diapers so they were selling diapers at a loss so they could put this diaper company in a position where they pretty much had to sell to them or something like that gosh yeah I mean that's a load of (laughs) yeah it's (laughs) it's crazy and there's nothing like you could do about like because Amazon could afford the losses right But, like, all of a sudden, if that's the case, then this other company is no longer getting as much business because you can get your stuff from Amazon a lot cheaper. Speaking of Amazon, I was thinking about that the other day when I was listening about how, you know, labor shortage isn't just about, like, it taking forever for you to get your order at a restaurant. Like, it also affects the supply chain because ports don't have enough workers to to direct traffic there and unload and load imports and exports and you know that main port that we were near for our cruise in LA like boxes of shipment containers stay in the water like in the bay for like a week before they're unpacked and you know they're talking about how you have to buy your Christmas presents now because stuff won't be here until Christmas and I'm wondering like while I hear all that how am I still getting prime two-day shipping like how is it when I order something on prime it's still getting here like in a day or two what is going on to make that possible yeah I don't know (laughs) I I mean yeah because I heard that too that um, I mean from several sources I think we saw it on Bill Maher maybe where they're talking about you have to order stuff now Mm -hmm. and then also i think my mom was saying that 
that maybe want to stock up on stuff because mm -hmm. because there's um, supply chain issues, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. I mean, at least from what I can tell, it doesn't. You can't tell that there's an issue when you go to the store. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess at Walmart, it does seem like there's a lot of stuff that's not well stocked. Depends on the time of day, but. But yeah, it I'd, can be really bad. You're right. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing though. It's just, or that's what it feels like, is it's just because maybe that day we went to Walmart a little later, and so it was less stocked in certain things. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. If Walmart is having trouble, then you know, everyone's having that trouble. That might be just like a again a labor shortage issue, not a supply issue supply chain issue yeah it's true as like much. walmart doesn't have enough employees to yeah. keep everything stocked. during a busy hour during the, the busy times yeah 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 that would make sense yeah i bet that's it more so than supply but it could be supply too yeah that was my thought i mean my thought is like they might have the stuff they just don't have it stocked mm -hmm. yeah did you ever go in the back room when you worked at Kroger? No, no. I was always up front because I was a cashier. Yeah, no. I would go in the back room because I worked at a floral clerk. Was it a ton Kroger. of stuff? Yeah. What? Tons it's of gotta stuff. It's got to be, right? Yeah. And then just like random stuff would be everywhere too. Like stuff that you can't tell how long it's been there. Not on a pallet, just like out and around. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But yeah, there'd be tons of stuff. Like how much of the building was just the storage? Well, so the actual back room like would run all the way down. It'd be this big, long, kind of wide hallway that would go all the way down the back um, parameter of the store. Mm -hmm. And that hallway we would be lined with all kinds of pallets for all kinds of stuff in general merchandise. So not like food stuff as much as just other household and bath and body products. And then like in the back, back room would be pallets stacked like up to the ceiling of a lot of like stuff like soft drinks, mm -hmm. boxed foods, canned foods. Yeah. So it doesn't take up that much space in the store. It just, like, is really stocked with a bunch of stuff. Well, like, how high up does it go? Like, how tall? I would say it was the ceiling. Yeah. But how tall was the ceiling? Um. I don't know. I'm gonna guess the feet. Was it like. Higher than you could go with a ladder. Like, an. Like, how many stories? More than one? Not. I don't think more than one. Just one story. Maybe. That doesn't sound like a lot. Maybe like one or two. One and a half or two. You know, like I they would have to get like, like our ceiling that's like one story. They would have to get not a crane, but like one of those machines with the long necks that like go up. Uh huh. To yeah. get the power. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like a forklift that goes. Yeah. Goes up. Yeah, so stores have a lot of stuff. I'm wondering if, like, for people who work at those places, do you think it's less now? Like, they're less well-stocked? Probably. Yeah, I mean, that's what you think. Do you need a lot of people, or shortage. you need people that work for a long time to unload all that stuff up? Yeah. So I don't know, like, where it's going to go from here. Like, I don't know if the labor sh shortage is just going to get worse. Or maybe automation will help with some of it. But I don't know if automation is moving fast enough to, like, replace people that work at McDonald's. Yeah, well, the thing is, I mean, it'll be either... The Either the customers will have to put up with, like, slow service, which 
some people probably won't want to, right? So then businesses will struggle more mm -hmm. um, or have an incentive. So I don't know. I don't know how to work because I could picture... I could picture like fewer people going to a business and then that business just going out of business. Yeah. Like McDonald's closing in different places because not enough people are going. I don't know McDonald's where they're from. Well, maybe not McDonald's. Although maybe some locations because I feel like maybe. that's one of the franchises, right? Maybe. So like each individual one might be owned. I mean, not all of them are owned by individuals, but some are. Yeah. Uh, you know, have you ever seen those Taco Bell and KFC, like, double Combinations, yeah. yeah. So I tried to go to one of those the other day, and the Taco Bell side was closed. That's interesting. Like, in the drive through it's like, no Taco Bell. Mm. Sorry. That's what it said on the sign. Is, that's probably what you went for, too, huh? Yes. <laughs> okay. I was like, of course. For some reason, I just had this feeling that that's what was going to happen. Well, so if that does happen, then all of a sudden, like, a lot of restaurants will not do as well, right? Mm -hmm. Which will probably mean places like Walmart will do better. Yeah. Because more people will have to buy their food from Walmart or Amazon, I guess. Store. Yeah. I mean, Amazon's really not great for food. No. But. It's annoying. They're pretty good for everything else. Yeah. Subscribe and save. I don't know. You save enough so that you're paying just as much as you would if you go to Walmart. Not even Walmart. If you're going to somewhere more expensive than upper Walmart. Upper end, yeah. Yeah, because Walmart, you can't really compete with their price. But you know, if you never have to leave your house, if you might never be want worth to it. Leave your house. Yeah, I mean, like it. if you get rid of a car, and then just use the Amazon just, delivery yeah. service. For food, um, I'm not sure other produce is though. Do they have that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I'd feel about someone else picking out my produce. Yeah. Because like. Especially bananas. Yeah, bananas. I mean. Yeah, because there can be a lot of bananas that don't look great. Mm -hmm. I bet they pick the greenest ones, really. The greenest. Yeah. I guess that would be okay. Yeah. As long as it's like not the ones with lots of spots. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I could definitely see it going in both of those directions. Like a lot of restaurants doing worse mm -hmm. if they're not able to meet their demands. Um, and I could see it leading to more automation. But like I don't know how that would work, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's like if a if like a restaurant is struggling then they're not going to have are they gonna money afford, right yeah. they're not going to have the money to do the automation so it's going to have to be someone who like takes a risk on it or it's going to be a company that's already doing automation and is able to serve more customers and so people are going to go there more often because mm -hmm. I think there are places that do have robots mm. um, for cooking I I feel like I've seen that but Maybe it's just like a test kitchen at this point. I don't know. Mm. But I think, I, I do think the labor shortage could lead to at least trying to do that, trying to automate more jobs. Mm -hmm. And then UBI? What? And then a UBI? Universal basic income? Yeah. I mean, ideally. <laughs> the thing is, if you have automation and you don't have a UBI, then that'll just make the wealth difference ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Because the wealthy won't even be hiring hardly any employees. Yeah. And so they'll just get all the profit. And then all of a sudden, you know. Nobody, if they want to work, can't. Yeah. Because it's been replaced. So then people won't have money to buy stuff with. So it'll be like. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess that that worst case scenario where like all the money goes to like some corporation, it wouldn't really. I mean, that would only happen if that company somehow was in charge of like everything. Mhm. Mm yeah. 
with all this with labor shortage, it's been interesting to see how many people can afford not to work. Or they're just, you know, choosing to suffer financially for the sake of not doing anything for the man anymore, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It, it's interesting. Like, you would think that people would need to work yeah, in order to right. sustain themselves. But, I mean, maybe it is just a lot of people who had money saved and are able to retire. And just a, t- a lot of people decided to retire a little earlier than they planned. Mm-hmm. And that would that would explain at least how people are getting by without working. Yeah. And I guess, like you were saying, cutting down on the costs of working. You were talking about that at some point, a book you read, where, like, there's a cost to working itself. So you can cut that, like, whether it's commuting or making your lunch for the day that you might not otherwise have. Cut those costs out. You can afford not to work as much. That's true. Yeah. Like, yeah, like if the only reason you have a car is to get to your job, then all of a sudden if you don't have your job, you don't have to have your car. And Mm -hmm. cars are expensive, like with gas and with maintenance. And with insurance. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, and not having that cost would make it a lot easier to get by. I mean, some people don't have rent. Like, if they have a house, then... And it's paid off, then they could have fewer expenses. Mm -hmm. I mean, tax, um, homeowner... Is that... What what is that tax called? Property tax. Yeah. Property tax... Um, can be a decent amount but sometimes it's a lot less than rent would be mm-hmm. so so yeah if all you have to do is pay property tax like pay your ex- I mean your bills, electricity your mm-hmm. you don't necessarily need internet if you don't have a job mm-hmm. I mean internet is you pretty much need it for most things but if you're not working, you don't actually need it. So, I mean, electricity you Unless probably your kid need. Your goes to school and they have Chromebooks. Yeah, but yeah, most schools. Yeah, I mean, I guess for the most part you do need internet if you have kids, or a job, or if you're in school or anything like that. Um. But even then, like, if all you have is, like, your taxes your for property tax, right? And if you don't have a car, then all your other expenses might just be food and energy and internet. Mm-hmm. Which you can pay for, I guess. With and phone, I guess, could be internet. optional as well. Mm-hmm. You probably need phone or internet nowadays. Mm-hmm. You might not need both, though. You could probably get by with just one. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think it should be interesting to see how it all pans out. It is interesting. Especially as our fear of COVID or, like, the risk of... Yeah. Or the ways to prevent getting COVID are increasing. Not the ways, but like, you know, vaccines are pretty effective, and now we've, you can get a booster. Mm-hmm. So it's becoming less of a concern, hopefully, that getting sick is a reason not to work. But there are plenty of other reasons not to work, for sure. Yeah. And so if the main problem is, like, people going into retirement then it's something that you'd think isn't going to be solved, right? Like, if there's fewer people... Well, I guess it could be solved by bringing more people in, right? Like, allow more immigration. 
Um, but otherwise, it's not like the labor shortage is going to get better if that is the main reason. If the main reason is people don't want to work, but they still need money, then at some point we might expect to see a big increase in mm -hmm. number of people working. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason, I expect that. The second one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, especially with how places are offering to pay a lot more than they used to, and some places have bonuses for just staying at the job for a certain amount of time. Or yeah. Well, time will tell. I guess we could follow up with it later if we <laughs> want. Yeah. I don't know why. It just some of it makes me want to just apply for. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the job. Yeah, it makes me want to like be on the be in the job market. Except my job is pretty I good. Hate so. I know. <laughs> and yours is too. You enjoy your job. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, catch us working at McDonald's near you <laughs> for the holidays. Over Christmas break, you want to get a yeah, job Yeah, Target's McDonald's. hiring for the holidays. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you there. Mm -hmm.